Hey guys, Jeju Island is one of the most popular tourist attractions in South Korea. From its hundreds of miles of semi-tropical national parks to its wild coastlines filled with waterfalls, it's no wonder that Jeju has been named one of the new seven wonders of nature. But besides going to the beaches and climbing a volcano, people go to Jeju for its food. But unfortunately for me, I can't make it down to Jeju this time. I'm kind of stuck in Seoul. But that's why I am here at Hala Sam. It's a restaurant located in Apujong, Seoul, and it's one of the first restaurants in Seoul to offer authentic Jeju cuisine. And what's really great is that I'm able to go in the kitchen and meet the head chef. Here. Hi. Hey guys. This is Sinsum. Yeah. And he's going to cook our meal today and uh, authentic Jeju food. Yeah. I'm excited. And this is the main course. Cutlass fish, also known as in Korean elephant fish. Wow, this guy is has some knife proficiency right there. <laughs> it's so long. And this is going into this rack because we're roasting this baby. Salt goes on. This fish is longer than the salamander's tail is even hanging off. And it's only gonna cook in there for about 13 minutes. And we got seafood stew cooking already. That looks good. See some crabs, some clams, shrimp. We're also gonna have some Jeju abalone. Wow, this guy is just slicing it paper thin. At this point, I'd be cutting one of my fingers off. By the way, I'm smelling the fish already, and it smells amazing. It's getting a nice char on the outside. This is a jordan. This is gonna go on top of fish that we're eating. This sauce is gonna braise the fish. And this is a really traditional Korean cooking method. And look at it, it's just sizzling. Oh my God, see all that grease coming out of that fish? It's like I'm about to eat a river monster. What makes this restaurant really unique is that, like I mentioned, it was one of the first Jeju restaurants in Seoul. And all the ingredients are flown from Jeju. So it's using really indigenous ingredients in their cooking. I'm here for the grilled silver hair tail set menu. And there's two options here. You got a two person option and a three to four person option. Now I'm going for the three to four people option because that's the option that gives you the biggest fish. And we always want the biggest fish. First course, we're gonna start with Jeju seafood porridge, natural soda sashimi, grilled pork belly slices, a sukkah pancake, soy sauce marinated crab, grilled silver hair tail, that's the main event. Jeju seaweed hot pot rice, assorted seafood soup, and then some dessert. First course is here. This is the abalone porridge. Oh, that smells so good. My mouth is already watering. There's a lot of sesame oil in here. It's so aromatic. Oh. Oh, that's nice. The flavor profile is not very strong. There's nothing really overpowering in this porridge. You can taste the little chunks of abalone. And when you bite down, you get that nice crunch of the sesame seeds. There's a really nice subtle start to this dinner. Mm. I'm ready for round two. Wow. What? Oh my goodness. You are an artist, my friend. <laughs> right, here's the main event. Wow. Oh my goodness. This fish is almost the length of this entire table. This is the mushroom and beef pancake. This is mackerel cooked in traditional Korean glaze. That looks insane. Seafood stew. Banchan. More banchan. This is seaweed rice. That is absolutely beautiful. And there's not just seaweed in here. There's actually a lot of scallions and abalone and sea urchin. All eight courses are on the table. You know when you're like standing next to a, a beautiful person, like you run into Brad Pitt or Halle Berry and you're just like, what, what do I even say? There's nothing I can say to express how just unimaginably beautiful you are. And that's kind of how I feel right now in front of all this food. Look at this sashimi bowl. It's just so pretty. It's like a bouquet. I mean, what do you think girls like? Would you rather have this or a bouquet of flowers? You want to have this, right? Right? Typically, I don't even eat sashimi, but I'm gonna try a piece of mackerel here. A little bit of soy sauce. Mm, that is so fresh. I Man, that thing basically jumped in my mouth. <laughs> it's actually really good. I'm so surprised. I haven't eaten uh, sashimi since, well, the last time I had it was puffer fish back in Japan, and that tasted like a rubber band, but this was so fresh and clean. And the next item is boiled pork belly slices. I mean, those are some of my favorite words, boiled uh, pork belly. And this is from Black Pig. This is a Jeju Island specialty. People fly to this island to eat this pig. And now this pig has visited us. Big slice with about 50% fat, 50% meat, a little bit of the skin, add a little preserved vegetables, a little bit of the sauce. And this sauce is actually made from the hair tail. Wrap it up in a little sum. Happy holiday to me. Oh my goodness, that's good. I feel like that pig took daily showers because that is the cleanest cut of pork I've had in a long time. I mean, that pig can sleep in my bed. That's how clean that flavor is. Then you got the beautiful crisp of the leaf, pickled vegetables, and the sauce. It's a little spicy. You don't need much at all because what I was tasting wasn't the overwhelming flavor of the sauce. It was more about the natural porky flavor of the meat. And this is pork from guys, like I mentioned, only from Jeju. And the meat is supposed to have more flavor than regular pork, and I concur. Why don't we get four pieces? 
I mean, that's just like an appetizer. Next item, assorted pancakes. This is a mix of uh, meat pancake and mushroom pancake. At first glance, it's just beautiful. Look how colorful it is. I mean, it's got every color I love. Green, red, yellow, beef. Oh my God. Oh, I feel like worshiping that pancake. Huge, huge beef flavor. It's more like a relationship. The more you chew it, the more you get to know it better, the more flavor it releases and the more you fall in love with it. And there's two types of pancakes. So this is the mushroom pancake. And I wanted to eat this as soon as he actually put the mushrooms into the pan because I love mushrooms since I'm such a fun guy. Okay, last time I'm telling that joke, I promise. Oh. Mmm, there's so little dough in there. I mean, there's just enough dough to keep all the mushrooms together, but that's it. So what you're getting is this mouthful of this wonderful mushroomy bite. This is some of the best Korean pancakes I've ever had. I never knew Korean pancakes could actually be like this because most of the Korean pancakes I've had in the States or the ones I had in Korea, I find most of it is sort of one dimensional to me, not that flavorful, but this, the beef is phenomenal. There's a pancake made out of the 90% of mushrooms. Then you got the awesome sauce on top. It's a little vinegary, spicy, you get the fantastic fantastic flavors of the scallions. All right, the time has come. The previews are over. We're down to our main event. This meat, I mean, I wish I could have it had it sooner because um, I've been talking for a while, eating the other dishes, and then I've been kind of neglecting it, and I feel so bad about that. Oh my God. There's certain foods I eat that triggers some sort of emotional response from me. I don't know if you guys just saw that look of euphoria hit my face for about three seconds. This dish is amazing. I can't believe the only thing on there is salt. This thing is just broiled under a salamander and sprinkled with salt. That's all that's been done to it. I guess it makes sense, right? If something that's naturally tastes really good, you don't need to do much to it. I mean, if you make Miranda Kerr wear a trash bag, she's still gonna be hot. And there's not a lot of hidden bones either. This fish is just like, you clean off this rib right here, and what's left is just this pure white flaky fish steak that you can just put into your mouth and I guarantee you will elevate your happiness by 100%. Mm. The skin is so thin and just evaporates as soon as it hits your mouth. You still taste like some little crystals of salt on top, which they do here on purpose because it gives you a, like, like a little crunchy texture with this delicate, delicate fish meat. In Chinese, we call this dai yu. My grandma used to cook me this dish and it's by far my favorite fish because the meat doesn't taste fishy one bit. And usually when she serves it, it's cut into sections and you kind of just gnaw on a particular section. I never had the whole fish sitting in front of me before though. And this is just a treat. Imagine your favorite snack or your favorite food item that you grew up eating and all of a sudden somebody put like a, a giant version of it in front of your face. Your reaction at that point should be bring that to my mouth right now. This is the Jeju seafood hot pot rice and I'm supposed to choose one of these two sauces and mix it just a little bit in there. Of course this looks more inviting to me. I'm gonna get a nice piece of abalone with this bite. This is amazing. I don't even think I need that sauce. I mean, this rice is so aromatic. There's so many things working in this bowl of rice right here. You got some pickled veggies, wonderful flavor from the seaweed. Mm. I don't love uni on its own, but mix that with your rice. It gives it just a slight oceany flavor. Oh man, that's just delicious. Next up, the seafood soup. After some rice, it's great to drink some soup. Wow. It's like I'm drinking a spicy ocean in a good way. There's about a dozen seafood flavors in this awesome soup kind of way. Oh, that seafood soup, that's off the charts. And finally, this is not on the set menu, but the chef is gracious enough to cook this for me. And this looks like a dish that should be called everything that Mike loves in one bowl. Scallions, chili, got mackerel fish, potatoes, onions, mushrooms. Give it a little herbs. The rice, the seafood soup, and the jodam. They each have a smack you in the face spice element to it. And look at this, guys. You know what this is just calling for? It's calling to be sitting on a pile of rice. Let's make that happen. If you're not drooling right now, I, I can't help you. I, I really can't. Piece of the mackerel, no bones at all. Get a big spoon of rice with all that beautiful sauce and veggies sitting on top. Bit of the mackerel as well. Oh my God. You already know this is gonna be an awesome bite. <laughs> That was a tremendous bite. It's like a flavored dance party. Everybody's invited. It's spicy, beautiful, thick, kimchi glaze, the wonderful seafood flavor from the oni and the abalone. And then you've even got some radish in here. I eat this every single day. 
all day long. Mm, mm. How come we didn't invite the fish to the party? Because the fish is not overly seasoned, it's like a perfect balance with the rice and jodam. If I had to choose this and the fish and the seafood soup are my top three in this meal. And the jodam is so good. I asked for an extra bowl of rice so I can eat all the sauce up. I mean, letting this go to waste would be a crime against flavor. Oh yeah. Mm. There's certain dishes that, <clears throat> that just goes perfectly with rice. And this is one of them. So good. This is definitely the best seafood meal I had in Korea so far. I mean, it's the best meal I've had in Korea that doesn't involve steak. It looks like a tornado blew through here. You know, the other day I had the Mayak Gimbap, which is known as the drug Gimbap because it's so addictive. They should call this the Mayak Fish because you just take one bite and you won't be able to stop eating it as evident to what happened here. And they tell me just the fish itself, just the fish that was here cost 150,000 won. That's like a, a piece of Kobe steak, but I am completely satisfied. Not only was this delicious, there's a nostalgic element to it. It just brought me back to a time when my grandmother used to cook this dish. And I'm so glad uh, they, they brought out this extra dish of jolting. Man, I can't believe I finished this. Maybe I used to be Garfield. Is that why I hate Mondays? But anyway, if you cannot make it down to Jeju Island, definitely come here. This is this is not a very touristy uh, restaurant. I only found out about this through my local Korean friends. So if you are in Seoul and you want a taste of Jeju cuisine, give this place a shot. All the information is listed for you guys in my description box. Thank you all so much for watching and until we eat again, I'll see you later.